So hello, I'm Terrell Russell. I will actually be the MC for the rest of our two days together. I'll stand up here and introduce everyone uh, as your, the rest of your talks get going. Um, but first, I get to talk about what uh, we've been working on in terms of the technology side and uh, share a little bit of what we've done in the last year as well as um, you know, the, the, the future gazing uh, crystal ball of what's gonna happen the next year which looks a lot like what it said last year because we fixed a lot of bugs this year. Um, and a lot of the features have been moved out to the edge. So the core development still, the same story applies. The interesting bits now are happening in plugins, which is, um, which is good. Uh, in addition to that, I'll be having three uh, co-presenters to this uh, set, of, set of slides. Uh, so you guys can meet some more faces in our group since we've turned over a little bit in the last year. Um, we'll introduce them as they come up. So we had three releases of iRODs proper at this point, the core kind of server and its attendant uh, pieces that are all kind of coupled together in one repository. Um, we had 4.1.11, which we promised was gonna be the last uh, release of the 4.1 series. More on that in a few minutes. Uh, we closed 92 things. Most of those were bugs uh, that were, had been in there for a while and were deep. Um, at that point, we were still, um, I guess 4110 had come out about the same time as 420. So uh, the things that are in 11 got forward ported and are also in 421 and 422, 423, all that kind of stuff, right? So um, we're still paying down some technical debt. And so at that point, the things that are in 41 series pretty much all get ported uh, forward. Uh, and that was. Um, 92 is a big number, and we waited for that to kind of accumulate for a while because we wanted that to be the last release. Turns out that didn't happen, so there's, there's more to that story. Uh, the 422 and 423, I think there was a blocker uh, somewhere in 422 that someone needed to get out. I don't remember the details at this point, so we cut that one with, uh, with 39 things included. Uh, and then 423, the deadline was uh, this particular set of people being in the room together, so welcome. Uh, we did some training yesterday with 423, and it worked, as far as I know, flawlessly. I think we had one thing that we saw on screen, but it didn't, uh, it didn't actually matter. It was just a, a warning message. Uh, the 18 that you see there hanging off of the end of 423 are the things that are going into 4112. Um, so those are the 18 that are kind of already closed and included uh, that will be in 4112. I think we've got four or five things remaining to kind of touch up for that. The plugins that we released that are not included necessarily in the chart at the top, I can look at my own screen also, I forgot. So the Python Rule Engine plugin has been out for a year and a half, two years now, and we updated it along with the 423 release. The uh, story behind that is it didn't actually change any. We, ha we have found no bugs in the Python Rule Engine plugin, which is, um, exciting, also quite astonishing. So either you guys are not using it enough or uh, it's amazing. It could be either one of those things. The reason that we had to release it again with nearly no changes is because we are still a little tentative in our versioning of these packages. This is the 4.2 series is the first time that we've had so many plugins tied to this new plugin architecture and uh, new compiler and all that kind of stuff. So we're being very conservative with our versioning of the plugins, and we have tied them closely. They are tightly coupled still with the versioning of the server. We hope to loosen that coupling for 4.3, and then we won't have to release all these plugins every time we touch the core again, which of course is the main goal. Um, it, it's a great thing for security audits when you don't have to touch everything because then they don't have to go get audited again, uh, but we're not quite there. We haven't really found a bug in our packaging yet, but we're not confident enough to decouple them yet. <clears throat> so that's why we've released all these extra things, even if things haven't really moved. Same thing with the auditing plugin. Um, it hasn't moved too much, but we had to release it again. Storage tiering rule engine plugin, uh, Jason mentioned it a little bit before. So um, we have a table here blocking our glorious backing, but we've got uh, these eight, one, two, three, yes, eight uh, capabilities. We've packaged, I'd say two and a half of them so far. Uh, storage tiering is the first one that we got out the door uh, and we're calling ready for you people to use it. Um, 
if there are questions about that, it was demoed. We've got blog posts. We've got um, the README now in the, in the repo is pretty good. The auditing rule engine plugin is the one that uh, emits AMQP messages for everything in the system. If you configure it that way, you can also trim it down so it doesn't emit quite as much and be very noisy, but that way you can do some um, very detailed auditing of what's going on in the system. Again, S3, we've added in the last year uh, Glacier support to the S3 plugin. What else did we add to S3? I think we found one bug with it. Um, I think that's it. We didn't touch it too much. It's been working for a lot of people for a, lot, uh, a long time. We have done some, net, some more testing with the S3 plugin. We are now um, the people that companies who have a new product that presents as S3, they come to us to get tested, which is uh, kind of crazy to me. Um, our test suite um, is more robust than other things that they can find uh, to use. And we have found bugs in other people's implementations of S3, and then they thank us, and then you know maybe they join later. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, GSI hasn't moved, Kerberos hasn't moved, I don't think too much, and Curl hasn't moved. But again, we had to release them because of the tight coupling with the, uh, uh, the versioning. The client story, we've got Python IROD's client got bumped. It, it gained uh, SSL support. Uh, it gained uh, the ability to know a little bit more about the objects. It's got some more introspection. We had to update it for 4.2 because of the change from resource names to resource hierarchies. Uh, so that's um, smarter now and, and can, can deal with, with things. We also... Uh, released the automated ingest framework. So that's the second uh, packaged piece of software to provide a capability on top of IRODs. In this case, it's not a plugin for the core code. It's a Python module that's released on PIP, available in PIP, and it uses the Python IRODs client and Redis queue to provide information to the server. We're going to have a talk about that tomorrow. Um, and then the cloud browser, we had one last release, I think, before uh, all the timelines are blurring. What did we add to that? We fixed something that was important. I think we got SSL working in that as well and released that. Uh, that will probably be the last release of cloud browser uh, in the run-up to MetaLinks being uh, kind of uh, where the development moves. We're going to put names on the screen, right? So. Uh, Jason mentioned 10 external uh, collaborators. Uh, they are largely at the bottom of these two lists. So the first list is when you ask Git who has touched the code since 4.1.10 on the 4.1 stable branch. These are all very recognizable names. Some of them are not with us anymore, but uh, that's okay. And some of them are external. Uh, Matthew Vernon and Brian Macon don't, don't work at IRODs. Uh, never did. Uh, the second half is the same information from 421 to stable, and largely the same cast of characters. Uh, but again, a couple, three at the bottom that don't don't work for us. So they've they found things and actually issued pull requests that we merged in. So that's great. And in all in all cases, closed a closed a bug. So so that's five. That's six issues that were closed by those uh, external collaborators. And here is where. I realized that I was gonna make a list of about six or seven things that we're working on, and oh my gosh, that's more than six or seven. Um, three of these will be, I'll be joined on stage for more explanation in a few minutes. Uh, so obviously we're working on three branches at this point, uh, the 4.1 stable, 4.2 stable, and then what will become 4.3, or the master branch. Uh, the Python IRADS client always gets work as things uh, it's, it's become the place where people are actively doing client-side uh, investigations, right? So if they find a, a shortcoming, they'll ask us and we'll add it in there. The indexing framework is one of our, it's on here, and so that's coming along. Luster integration, like Jason talked about, we've got work, uh, Jace, uh, Justin and Jason went to, and Dave, were at the Luster user group meeting, what is that, two weeks ago, four weeks ago? Time is compressed. I have no idea when they were in uh, the Luster user group meeting. Uh, and Justin did a demo or just a talk? I don't remember. Just a talk. Okay. But we have um, software that can now listen to the change log coming out of the metadata server uh, of Luster. And the idea is that the ICAT will be updated uh, by watching that change log. Uh, obviously, work on metalinks. We've got a very interesting. 
uh, bit of work done on Cockroach uh, as a database plugin. This will allow you to have uh, catalog providers everywhere rather than catalog provider and catalog consumers. This will solve the problem of uh, if you have a very active read system that does a lot of reads, uh, you no longer have to make the double hop to wherever the catalog is. The catalog will be everywhere. So we're very excited about that. Uh, Ceph Rados resource plugin. Um, uh, Jasper is going to talk a little bit about uh, the testing infrastructure. That one has been out for a few years, but we've never released it just because we don't have it in CI. And our official line is if we don't have a dot for it in CI, we don't release it and it's not supported. But I think it works fine. We've heard that it works fine. The query error database plugin, we've also talked about that for a couple years now. Again, we have not released it just because we haven't had the testing uh, infrastructure to get it up and running and, and proven. Uh, but that's, again, you can ask questions about any of these at the end of the talk. I'd be happy to talk more about these. The R client library, same story. It works. I don't have it in CI. Multi-part transfer, that's the next talk, I think, on the schedule. Um, so Zoe's going to talk about uh, the work on that. That's basically the precursor for the V5 API, which is very exciting. Um, I think she has real numbers to share with you. We have some work uh, for, the, um, for IRODs to be able to be mounted as an NFS volume, but still going through IRODs, and so all the policy enforcement points would still get hit. That's going to be the NFS for J project. We're going to have an intern this summer which is new for us, and their project will be well scoped and it's going to be get NFS for J uh, implemented and working. Work on the metadata templates, obviously, and then like I said, uh, forever work on the testing infrastructure. We have, at this point, maybe more code testing IRODs than we do uh, in IRODs. I guess that's a good thing, right? So this next slide is uh, for Alan to come and join me. Here he comes. So this is Alan King. He's been here for ooh, since October, and he now owns the 4.1 branch. So I both apologize to him and uh, congratulate him. Thank you. Thanks. Um, yeah, so promises were broken, and uh, now I'm working on 4.1 um, until it's done. Uh, so. Um, there's been one major driver of the 4.1 uh, work that's been going on. Not sure if I should name them, um, <laughs> but uh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, they have a very complex uh, resource tree. Um, I've tried to make a very simplified, very very simplified illustration on the uh, right there. Um, and the main reasons we have been uh, putting a lot of work into this are for two problems that uh, we've been seeing and been trying to fix. Um, the first is that not enough replicas are showing up when files are being put into IRODs um, via this resource tree. Um, so as you can see, it's a replication resource with randoms under that, with randoms under those, with storage resources under those. Um, in some cases, only one copy would show up where there should be two. That's really bad. Um, we determined that that could be caused by network, storage, OS issues. Um, so we implemented a retry mechanism um, to just retry <laughs> the uh, data transfers um, on replications uh, s to ensure that enough replicas, or the correct number of replicas show up. Um, the other issue is quite the opposite problem, which is uh, that too many replicas were showing up, in this case three where there should be two in most cases, and um, that's a problem because it fills up storage a lot. Um, We've only been able to reproduce this with uh, concurrency, so multiple puts happening at once, and we're not sure. We're not sure what <laughs> is going on there. It could be concurrency. There may be a problem in the replication resource plugin. We're not sure. So we created an enhanced logging feature, which is so far only in 4.1. It will probably only be in 4.1. Uh, 
um, for additional information for everything going on in there. And along the way, we found a lot of interesting problems with the replication resource, which we don't think solved the problem, but they're, they're now in 4.2, so you get those benefits too. And the story will be continued, <laughs> hopefully to be resolved at some point. Does anybody have any questions about 4.1 at this point? Yes. Yes, yeah, so the enhanced logging will be in 12, uh, 4112 regardless. Uh, right now it is out for, uh, what do we call that, testing? We'll call it for, te we'll call it for testing. Uh, and yes, it will be in there. It, it's, it's basically writing a lot, of, a lot more stuff down. The, the tricky part was being able to track uh, the connections in a loaded system to be able to track the connections across multiple servers. Um, so. Uh, in the next couple slides, we'll hear about our plans for the future, but uh, retroactively, we're going to just write more stuff down for 4.1.12 or for 4.1 um, stable. Good? All right, thank you. So talking a little bit about 4.3, um, the, the last bullet on this slide addresses that question. Um, so in 4.3, we're basically going to focus on three to four things. and that's it. We would like to make 4.3 the place where we're doing the bulk of the work, and then 4.2 will go the way of 4.1 and eventually only become bug fixes and things that are actually blockers for people that are on 4.2. Um, supporting three branches is a lot more work than two, and two is a lot more than one, so we would like to uh, get to the point where we're writing new code in the new code place and only backporting if it's actually affecting someone who's paying for our time and, and brain power. We want to encourage upgrades as much as possible. We think that the future is bright. So the IROD's monitor process is something we've proposed. We've got an RFC for it. And basically the idea is to give IROD's a little more introspection so that it can self-report about what its capabilities are, whether it's awake, who its friends are, how long it's been there, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, this is the thing that would basically replace um, some, if not all, of the functionality that we're seeing people need by using Nagios right now. Uh, you can still use Nagios, but this would be an, a better thing to ping and ask it questions, because it'll know more stuff. Uh, we have very interesting use cases where some people want to start doing uh, CRC rolling checksums, and that would be tricky to add to the existing implementation. So the idea is that we're going to push that functionality down into the magic box that knows how to speak to storage because some storage already calculates checksums, keeps track of that for you, and if your policy is to trust the hardware, that's fine. Right now, we don't really have a way to kind of tie into that, but if a storage plugin can be released separately from the core and it's in charge of providing what is a checksum, then we can do that everywhere. The tricky part about that is that we have to push that down into all of the different storage resource plugins at the same time for 4.3. So that is why it gets its own bullet, because that's actually not simple to do. We'll have to do that everywhere. The third one we've heard from a lot of people, and there's a talk about this later, is to uh, make iRods more cloud-friendly. I would like to run this in the cloud and make it self-healing, and uh, that's great. That's not easy to do right now. Uh, it was not built with that in mind 15, 20 years ago when the architecture was first designed, but we have made progress and we are on our way. We would like to hear input for what you think is important for that. So please, again, um, help. We have an issue that's open for that. If you have ideas or hard-won knowledge, please share it. We don't want to try and do this twice because that'll be messy. And then the fourth one is basically a logging overhaul. You know, We have found that when people have many computers, uh, it turns out tracking a particular connection through those machines is not easy even if you're doing the best job you can in terms of aggregating logs and things. That we just don't share that information across hops, and we need to do a better job of that. So um, Corey Drawn is going to come up here. He's also been with us now for, ooh, what are we measuring in, three months? Two and a half months, three months? So Corey has been handed the task of working on the future. This is what we promised to Alan, and then we apologize to Alan. Uh, Corey gets to work in, on the nice things and he's gonna make them better. So here you go. All right. 
Yeah, so in today's I rise, you know, the log files are pretty much inconsistent. Like you have some messages have things out of order, you see time like like um let's see, so you might have arrows or any kind of thing inside the log message. There's also like incomplete support for some features like syslog. Like I don't know if it works properly, so there's that. Is the current log is also not very helpful in tracking when errors occur. So it depending on what the area is. Um, is not helpful, it's definitely not helpful when tracking across multiple servers, as Terrell said. So that's something that we really want to fix. Um, so some of the design goals with the refactor is that we want to use existing login libraries. We don't know exactly which one yet, but for example, speedy log is one I'm familiar with and I know it works pretty well. Um, so right now we're trying, we're kind of experimenting with that. Um, we also want to enable app administrators to easily capture process and analyze activity. That should kind of be a given considering like, the use of a new library instead of us trying to reinvent the wheel and things like that. Um, obviously we want it to be consistent. The message format inside these log files should all, of you, you should be able to write, be able to parse the log file and filter things, you know, as you want. Um, and obviously a big thing that, like I just mentioned, was that we want to make it easy to track errors across multiple servers. You know, that means including things like the host name, process ID, timestamps, plug-in names, possibly, and any other things that might be helpful in tracking down errors in large clusters of machines. We also want this to be easy to tie into existing infrastructure. So whatever you're using to gather log information all those things, we want iRise to be able to fit right in that system. You shouldn't have to install additional software and things like that to make this work. And, let, and one of the other design goals is just to maybe add more knobs to iRise so that you can control maybe the output format or where things are directed. Um, you know, it would be nice if iRise could emit messages so that you could send and direct things to different locations. So, yeah. And I guess if, you know, just if you have suggestions and questions about, you know, what should we be doing with the login, you know, you can always reach out to me or anyone else here. So, you know, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we don't we don't run clusters. So if you if you know how to do that and what what what's hard about logging, let us know. I didn't mean to interrupt the clapping. We should all clap for Corey. <laughs> and then my last uh, able-bodied assistant here. So Jess Breet has been with us the longest of our new people. Um, she's been here like a year and I don't know, uh, who knows. Um, She's going to talk about uh, build and test in terms of what we've done, what we're doing now, and what's coming. Hello, people. So I sort of manage the test infrastructure for iRods, and I am supposed to be the one who is a pain point in the team's life. Because our tests sort of take like almost eight hours to complete, so everybody's waiting to figure out what went wrong so that they can start fixing their things. So as you see that it's changed so many times, um, they've, you, you know, before I came and they've already tried on OpenStack and everything else. So fi finally when I joined, we are using, come on, Terrell. Okay. So, Right now, we have Jenkins, Python, Ansible, zone, and Zone Bundles, and we launch VMs on vSphere. So what Zone Bundles is, basically, we are defining what all we are going to test, like on which OS and what database are we going to use. So it kind of defines our infrastructure, uh, our installation. 
in a way. So ever since I came in, I found, I've been into too many trouble. Uh, we had to end support of CentOS Center 6 and Ubuntu 12 because we found that too many things have kind of, um, like OpenSSL was one of the issues that we found. So we decided that CentOS 6 and Ubuntu 12 needs to be buried somewhere. And we had all our build logic and test logic somewhere hidden in Ansible. So when I came in and since we moved into the plugin architecture, uh, our Ansible code was kind of getting messy. So uh, I decided and at least, you know, when Ben was there, so we both decided that the best thing to do was to move the Ansible code out. And now it's in, there's a like a hook you might see the hook a test hook and a build hook in each repository of each module like irods also has a build hook even every plugin has a build hook uh we are also i am sort of trying to create uh, try to clean the jenkins workflow each plugin kind of uses just two jobs, which is run script on VMs and run script on IROD zone. So the run script on VMs basically just cre creates a clean VM and runs a Python script, maybe a build hook or a test hook, depending on what you're trying to do. Whereas run script on IROD zone is used by any plugin because plugins need IROD's installed. So we kind of use these two jobs to run all the plugins. Um, next slide is you're going to see that we are green. Until and unless we are not green, we don't release. So I am the bottleneck in a way. <laughs> uh, so this is what I've been trying to do ever since I come came in. And the future is basically, as you saw, that there are certain things like the Sephiroth the R I rods is not in CI, so we haven't released them. So there are several different, several components that are still not in CI, so I'm working on that. Um, our pipeline scripts are still in Jenkins and we don't want it there. We, uh, so I'm working on moving them out onto GitHub. We have several different inconsistencies in our um, uh, infrastructure. We sometimes find false reds. False greens is a bad issue, but false reds is considered good in a way, but uh, we still kind of have to rerun our tests. Uh, this is because of the Python module that we use to create VMs on vSphere. Uh, another thing that I need to work on is containerizing Jenkins so that the update of Jenkins happens as soon as the new release comes in. Uh, right now, since it's on a VM, so upgrades are pretty slow and we kind of get in the way uh, uh, of losing all security updates that Jenkins gives us out. Uh, there, is a re there is a reason why I showed you the slide of what Jenkins, the Jenkins buttons is because our Jenkins got hacked because we were not upgrading as soon as security updates were coming in. So once we containerize, we would, should be able to uh, have, the, have Jenkins server up online so that you guys can take a look at what we are doing. And Hopefully, we might be able to containerize our testing instead of just containerizing, gen like right now we are creating VMs and destroying VMs and it sort of takes us eight hours. And testing iRods is difficult since it's distributed and we are kind of testing over on, use on several different OS systems, several different databases. Any questions? Or do you know how to make my infrastructure smarter? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much.
So I've got a couple more slides. I'll go quick, and then we're going to let Hal talk about his stuff. Um, so these next few slides are the same as last year because the story is the same and we don't have any new pictures. Um, so 4.2 was about sending stuff out, right? We got things modularized, new, a new compiler, all the shiny stuff. Uh, everything's pluggable. Uh, we have Python Rule Engine plugin now. We had one in, we've got one in JavaScript that's unreleased. We've got one in Go that we haven't released. It's not, it didn't come from us. Um, and then, of course, the enterprise messaging tie-in. 4.3 is about being able to ask questions of all that stuff that you send out, right? What does that mean? So right now we have IRODs speaking GenQuery to an SQL database. It's the way it's always been. We're all very safe and happy with this, right? Oh, it turns out that some of the metadata that you might want to store shouldn't really go in a relational database because you have a lot of it and it's better to go in a graph database or something, right? We've heard this, we understand, so we applied some how to it. And then we have uh, GQV2, also known as Query Arrow. And so now the idea is that you will be able to put your metadata in other data stores, which means that you can also, and this was demonstrated, oh goodness, two years ago maybe, last year, uh, demonstrated being able to have different ACLs on different metadata versus the data itself. We, it's a big request. Uh, not part of the original design goal, but with this magic, uh, it is possible. So the idea is that IRODS becomes through enterprise messaging about sending messages out through different plugin interfaces. You can do things like triple stores or indexing. That's pretty shiny and cool. But what's even cooler is that for 4.3 with GenQuery 2 or Query Arrow, you can put your arm around that and call it virtualizing metadata, right? In the same way that we virtualize storage, we're virtualizing the metadata itself. It doesn't matter where it lives. The infrastructure doesn't matter anymore, right? You can provide a common service layer out, facing outward. This is a big deal. And of course, what's really cool is that if you're doing that and you federate with someone else who's doing that, your service layer can make requests to their service layer. And if they know all about mouse brains and you know all about infectious diseases, uh, maybe you can ask queries of each other and do cool science. Right? You don't have to know how their stuff works. They have a service interface. They don't have to know how your stuff works. You have a service interface. Science becomes uh, very possible then. So in terms of ending this quickly, um, this is how we do our work. We stand up here, we tell you what's broken, what works, and then we hear your requests and your anger, and then we make it better. We do that through our technology working group. We do that monthly. Uh, this is where you get to vote on what happens next. Uh, we have a metadata templates working group. We're going to merge, I think, back the, the Metalinks work that we did to get to the point where Metalinks was releasable under the consortium, uh, back into the work on metadata templates because that's where we find interest in the community right now, uh, getting an implementation that's, that's um, front to back and works. We do our work in public on GitHub. All of our typos are extremely public, extremely global, very quickly. We would love to have more pull requests. Like I said, we've had, I think, more this year than we've had in the past. We've closed six or seven things from other people's work. And of course, we have a chat list on Google. And please, in the end, this all is a funnel towards membership. This is a sustainability play. None of us are getting rich doing this. It's great. Are there any questions for me? Excellent. Thank you so much. And I will now hook up Hal's laptop.